senior service technician here at Norfolk. Today, in this video, we're going to be adjusting the 1020 double end trim saw to set it up so that it's, the timing is correct and it's cutting 45s and 90s accurately. We're going to start by adjusting the flow controls on the feed cylinders and the saw cylinders so that the timing is correct. All right, first thing we're going to do is remove the synchro link arms from both sides. We use a quarter inch Allen wrench. We'll remove the shoulder bolt at this end. Make sure and save the washer that's under the ball end. We're just going to reinsert the bolt into the same hole. We're removing both synchro link arms. So this is the other side. Take the two arms and push them to the back. The next thing we're going to do now is to check the settings on the feed stops on both sides. And to do that, we'll take a short piece of trim, place it in where the trim goes, use the feed assembly to push it all the way in until you're tight up against the feed stops. After we push the trim all the way in, as far as the stops will let us, then we measure from the close side of the trim to the close side of the turntable. The trim should be at six and three quarter inches from the front of the turntable. So this one's obviously not enough. We're gonna to have to adjust it in quite a ways. So I'm gonna reset the stops on the feed assemblies to get us closer to where we need to go. All right, now I have reset the, the feed stops to get the board in the correct position. Take a short piece of trim again, position it in the saw. We'll use the feed assembly to push it in by hand until it goes all the way up against the stops, the rubber bumpers. And then we'll measure from the close, end of the close side of the trim to the close side of the turntable. The factory setting is six and three quarter inches from the trim to the edge of the turntable. And that dimension needs to be the same at both ends. So next we're gonna use a 5 16 Allen wrench to, to loosen the hold down cylinder plate. We will adjust the hold down cylinder plate so that the cylinder is positioned over the high spot of the trim. And then tighten the bolts again. So we're at the other end of the saw and we're going to adjust the hold down cylinder plate so that like the other side, the hold down is directly over the high spot on the trim. So this is the shock absorber that stops the feed at the end of its stroke. Uh, the shock absorber has about a one inch stroke. When the feed comes all the way up to the feed stops, we want it to depress the shock absorber about three quarters of an inch. So there's about a quarter of an inch of it showing, and then we can lock a lock nut up against there to hold it in place. Now I'm just going to use a standard pair of channel locks to tighten the lock nut. So this is the uh, movable end of the saw. Again, we're going to set the shock absorber so that when the feed is up against the feed stops, 
compresses the shock absorber about three quarters of an inch and we'll lock the lock nut to hold it in place. Okay, now I'm ready to uh, turn on the saw cycle and adjust the flow control. So we're going to turn on the air only, not the electricity. Air on, cycle start. The first thing to adjust is the speed setting on the stationary side. Flow controls for the feed cylinder. There's one at the front which controls how fast the feed returns, and the one at the back controls how fast the feed brings the board into the machine. And again, you screw it in to make it go slower, and screw it out to make it go faster. The upper flow control controls how fast the saw goes up, and the lower flow control controls how fast the saw goes down. Screw them in to make it go slower, and screw it out to make it go faster. These come up slowly, so it does a nice cut, and it can return more quickly. As long as it's not returning too fast, so it's like this. Down nicely. I will set the speed of the up saw to match the speed of the stationary saw. Now that we have the flow controls adjusted, we can reconnect our synchro links so that we can actually cut some material and set our 45s and 90s. So the other thing we want to do here with the synchro link is we need to make sure that both synchros are synchro arms are approximately the same length, give or take a sixteenth or so. And they are, so that's good. So next, I'm going to set the uh, synchronizer so that it's adjusted correctly, so that it'll position the board correctly. So in order to do that, we're going to loosen the clamp where the feed drive arm clamps onto the square drive assembly. See how that's loose? Now we're going to put a little bit of tension on that so that when I pull this, it moves the bar, but if I hold the other side, I can still make it slip. So now, on the movable end of the saw, I'm going to push the feed all the way forward and position a penny. We're going to position a penny between the feed stop block and the rubber washer on the movable side and hold it into place. Then I'm going to push the stationary side all the way in to the rubber washers and lock the feed drive arm down. What that should give us then is when we hold the movable side all the way against the feed stop, the 
stationary side should have most of the play in it. And when we hold the stationary side up to the feed stop block, the movable side should have play equal to about the thickness of the penny. So now that we have the saw timing set and the synchronizer adjusted, the next step is to actually cut some trim and check the 90. So we've set both saws to 90 degrees and we've moved it in to cut a narrow piece of, small piece of trim and we have a small piece of trim to cut. When adjusting the angle of the saw, this adjustment bolt is for the 90 degree setting. A lock nut and adjust the bolt as necessary to correct the angle. And then lock the nut again before you cut. This adjustment bolt over here is for the 45 degree setting and works the same way. Now that I have the 90s and the 45s both looking pretty good, the next thing I'll do is I'll cut a short leg. So I'll have the 45 at this end and the 90 at this end. And then without changing this, the length of the saw, I'm just going to rotate the two turntables so I have a 90 at this end and a 45 and cut a second piece. two short legs, I can put them back to back on the bed of the saw, line up the two 90s, and look at the lengths. The lengths should be approximately the same, or at least very close to it. If the lengths are not the same, then the feed stops are not set correctly. This is also a good way to check your saw on a daily basis, cut two short legs, Bottom up like this, check to see that the 45s match. 
if your 45s have been good the day before, the odds of both 45s being off the same angle is astronomical. So if they match, then you're pretty secure that they're both still 45. If one of them is different, then go back through the procedures for setting the 90s and the 45s. So you butt the two boards up back to back, line up the 90s. If the 45s do not match, if they're not the same length, then the feed stops need to be adjusted. So we'll have to remember which one is the long one. This is the long one. And then we'll go back over to the saw. So when we checked the two boards back to back, we discovered that this board was a little longer than this board. So I'll come back to the saw, and I'm going to position them as they were cut. 45 at this end, 90 at this end, 45 at this end, 90 at this end, as they were cut. Taking the long one, this one is longer because when it was positioned in the saw, it was at an angle this way, which made it further from the blade, which makes the board longer. So we need to correct the angle back this direction. This one is shorter because it was also at the same angle, bringing it down closer to the saw at the 45 degree angle. So what we're going to do, because this saw needs, this board needs to be positioned this way more, is we will take the feed stops on that side and move them forward half the difference between the length of the long board and the short board. If the boards are an eighth of an inch difference, we'll need to move the stop one sixteenth forward to correct the length issue. If we make a significant change to that, we may need to go back and adjust our 90s and 45s again. We'll adjust the feed stops forward half the difference between the long board and the short board. So if the longer board is an eighth of an inch longer, we'll move the stops ahead a sixteenth of an inch to correct the angle.